What's going on and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name's Chris, I'm gonna be your host for today. And today we got a second bourbon on our 2022 hunting list. This is the Remus Repeal 6. Now, I know you've probably already seen reviews, people don't like this, but let's get to ours here. Everybody knows before we get started, time for the traditional sip. Cheers y'all. Maybe they were right. So if this happens to be the first video you're watching, welcome. What we do here is we rank our bourbons on price, taste, drinkability. This particular bourbon, let's talk a little bit about it. Coming in at 100 proof, it has 2% of 2008 bourbon, which would be 14 years old at 21% rye, 27% of 2012 bourbon at 21% rye, 29% of 2014 bourbon at 21% rye, 17% of 2012 bourbon at 36% rye, and then 25% of 2014 bourbon at 36% rye as well. Tells you right here on the bottle, this is the Remus Repeal Series 6. This is coming from Ross and Squibb Distillery, formerly known as MGP. And I can already tell you off the bat, the sticker's off center, and I don't know why it bothers me that much. But listen, let's work our way through the categories, price, taste, drinkability. We always start with drinkability, and then during the Bourbon Bomb of the Week, we're going to learn a little bit more about the master distiller behind this particular batch. Let's take another sip and see what we think for 100 proof. I will say this, when I first opened this up and had the neck pour, it sipped a little bit hot, but for right now, what I'm getting off of this, first glass of whiskey for the night, this sips very easy for 100 proof. No way I would blind this and say it's 100 proof. I would probably put it in the 90, 95 range, and even on a bad night of my proofing skills, I'd probably put this down in the 80s somewhere. Very easy to sip, very light when it comes to the ethanol kick, so I will give them that when it comes to this bottle and give them a very good score on drinkability. Let's give it like a 9.17 when it comes to drinkability on this. Cheers. Next, we're gonna get into taste on this, which is where I think this bottle is truly gonna struggle. Now, I will say I learned something the other night. I was watching Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews live stream. He had Jason from The Mash and Drum, Scott from My Bourbon Journey, and they were actually talking about Remus Repeal 6 versus Remus Repeal 5, which everybody seemed to love, including myself. So Jason, during this live stream, actually told us that the Remus Repeal 5 was a special release. It was some type of anniversary release. Some of the juice in there was much older than what we're getting out of the 6 here, and I didn't know that going into my experience with 6. I thought 5 I was just straight across the line with the rest of them. I've never had four. I've only had five and six. I will compare this to five eventually in another video, but it was just interesting to know that that was a special release. It had older whiskey in it compared to something like the six here. So it's interesting to see what a special release from Remus can bring us versus a standard release. And I don't think this is quite going to live up to what we get from five. That being said, let's take one more sip here and get some tasting notes for you. So I will say the most notable thing that I'm getting out of this particular glass is chocolate. And let me tell you something, I am not one of those people that come out with the most ridiculous flavor profiles, but I truly thought of this drinking the other night and I had a glass of this and I just had to tell you guys about it. So you know when you make a s'more and you actually put the marshmallow in the fire and it engulfs it in a flame and you have that burnt marshmallow that you can just pull off the top of the marshmallow and you still have your marshmallow on the stick. If you took that, smashed it on a piece of Hershey's chocolate, put that on a piece of wood in the fire and then pulled it out and licked it off of that piece of wood. That is what I am tasting here. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever said in my life when it comes to a tasting profile, but it's exactly what I'm getting. It's just burnt, charred, chocolatey, marshmallowy, tannins, dryness, oaks. There's not a lot when it comes to sweetness on this. It's not very dark in flavor either. It's more of a, a light flavor. It's very thin. I don't love this bottle at all when it comes to the flavor profile. It's one of those things that I think I was truly expecting something great coming off of the five. Hearing all the bad reviews about it, I thought I still have to try it for myself. I still have to pick up a bottle. Here we are. I don't love it. I'm hoping maybe it gets a little bit better with time. I doubt it'll ever live up to the five, but at the end of the day, that's what we're working with here. Not a great flavor profile for me particularly. I think there's a little bit of licorice in this as well. I don't really know what they're trying to do here. It's not well blended. It's not well balanced. It's a lot of rye, a lot of spice, a lot of oak, and a lot of burnt marshmallowy s'mores chocolate. Ugh. I don't know. That's a lot to try to digest both physically and mentally, but at the same time, we do have to give this a score. I don't want to do this. I'm going to put it low fives, 5.13 when it comes to taste on this. So last but certainly not least, that's going to get us into price on this. And the price on this bottle is $99 plus tax. And do I think that's high? Yes, only because I don't truly love this bottle. Did I think it was high for Remus Repeal 5? Absolutely not. 
We know that the bourbon market is still on the up and up. Some people are saying it's starting to plateau. I don't think it's doing that quite yet. People are talking secondary trends are either steadying or going down. And I think it's just kind of shifting towards a different market. I think the special release bottles are going to become huge now. I think companies are going to start downsizing their releases rather than making more and more mass produced product. I think that's going to be bad for the consumer over the actual distillery because people know if there's only so many out there and you only get one opportunity to buy it, you're probably going to try and buy it. The other thing that I've really noticed lately that's starting to bother me a little bit is when you go on these distillery websites, they'll give you a link usually on where you can buy these bottles, Reserve Bar, Mash and Grape, all these other places coming directly from the distillery's website. And you go to these actual websites and they're two, three, four times MSRP. Now, if I was a distillery and I told you MSRP on this bottle was $99 and I put a link to your website on it and you're selling it for $250, I don't think I would keep you on my website very long. And that's just me. I'm not in the industry of selling bourbon, but that would bother me. So for this bottle at $99, I know I'm ranting, but let me go here. Let's take one more sip and let's find out. I don't want to be too harsh when it comes to this bottle, but I really don't think that I love the taste of it. I think the drinkability is exceptional. I think the price is just a little bit high. I got to keep it under the sevens. I'm going to go with like a 6.92 when it comes to the price on this, only because I think they can put out better product than this. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the master distiller behind this during this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week. Cheers, y'all. So for this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week, we're going to talk a little bit more about the master distillers behind MGP and not just the current one who we will get to, but the ones of the past as well, because this company kind of confuses me a little bit with their timeline. I do a lot of research online. I talk to a lot of people that I know, and I can't quite figure out some gaps in the master distiller timeline. So we can actually go back to 2016 when a gentleman named Greg Metz, who you probably know, left MGP and became the master distiller at Old Elk. But then there's a little bit of a gap until 2019 when another gentleman, Matt Greeno, took over. But I'm not really sure how long he was there. I'm not sure who was in between these two gentlemen. Did they just have a three-year gap of no particular master distiller? Or did they have somebody involved that I just don't know about? So again, I'm going to make another assumption that between 2019 when they hired Matt Greeno and 2021 when Luxco got bought out by MGP, that it was still Matt Greeno. Now in 2021 when they did buy out Luxco, did somebody from Luxco step in as master distiller? Did it stay? Matt Greeno up until 2021 September when they actually changed their name to Ross and Squibb putting Ian Sturzman in charge I'm not quite sure and again maybe you guys can help me out but as far as I'm concerned Ian Sturzman's first bottle when it came to the Remus project was Remus Repeal 6. Now, Ian Sturzman is not new to MGP. He's had a variety of jobs with the company since 2014. In 2019, he got his Master Distiller Certificate. And again, in September of 2021, when they changed the name to Ross and Squibb, he was immediately appointed Master Distiller. Now, like many other master distillers, he has a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering with a minor in biological science. Pair that with his time already at MGP. He definitely has the resume for the job. I think it was definitely tough coming off the coattails of Remus Repeal 5, but this is what we're getting from Remus Repeal 6. Let's send it back over and see what our final score was. But listen, if you stuck around this long, make sure you click that like and that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps the algorithm out a lot. This bottle somehow broke the sevens at a 7.07. .07. I know we got carried by drinkability, but at the end of the day, taste on this bottle, price on this bottle, the off-center label, everything else about it just kind of gave me bad vibes. So I'm not truly in love with this bottle, but I am still glad that I got to pick it up because this is a special release. But listen, that's where I'm gonna leave you for today. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, at Bourbon of the Week, go click that follow button over there. Check out our Patreon. We have great perks just for Patreons. That link in the description below. If you wanna come chat with us 24 seven, we have a Discord link in the description below as well. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all. Marshmallow.